Hello and welcome to the show. The IMSA GT cars are certainly some rather interesting vehicles. The Audi came out in uh, Forza 5. is quite a crazy vehicle to drive. It's a fantastic turbo noise. However, there was only the Audi on Forza 5. However, come to 6 and we have two other IMSA cars. The Nissan 300ZX and the Mazda RX-7. While they all have very different powers and weights and so on, and the, the Audi's four-wheel drive, the other two aren't, very interesting to see how they would fare if you were to go racing all with all of them. Now, there is a little bit of a problem. The Audis and the Nissans have some real issues getting off the line. If you don't change the gear ratio slightly, they will not launch. And if you, so Even if you do change the gear ratios on them, you still saw some cars and had a few issues getting them uh, off the line. I was lucky. I started at the front, could manage to avoid all of the chaos. This Audi started well down the order, got a really very, very good start, made his way up to second uh, by the time they got to, uh, the, uh, to the top of the hill. These are a lot faster than normal kind of cars that uh, we would go racing with, and they certainly were, you saw in the background, a few bumps and shunts uh, throughout the field. They're certainly not helped by the, uh, the cars having issues getting off the, off the line. <laughs> These two Mazdas were going at it as they run down the uh, back straight. The blue car gets past on the inside, but he's going to run a little bit wide on the exit. The green vehicle is back up the inside. He's going to retake his place. It's a big slide from the Mazda. These cars are very, very powerful. The Mazda 640 horsepower in them. They only weigh 2,200 pounds. So that is a massive power to weight ratio. Incredibly easy to get these cars sliding around. And it is the light blue Mazda that has got the better run down this uh, bag straight. He's on the inside as they come into the chicane. The Nissan has come from miles back. Uh, gets himself up the inside as well, trying to make the most of it, but gets run out a little bit wider. The, uh, the Mazda at the front of this group here certainly had a, an easier job with the Nissan uh, interfering, trying to, uh, to make a pass. The Nissan quickest car here in a straight line by quite some way. It's a mighty impressive thing. 780 horsepower in the uh, Nissan, but it is a damn sight heavier than the Mazda. Nissan gets up the inside into turn one. Relatively simple out braking maneuver, uh, or relatively simple to get past just because of that straight line speed, but the Mazda's going to do a cutback on him. The Mazdas are better through the corners. They are easier to drive through the turns, certainly, than the Nissan, but you've got to be aware of the, the Nissan's stupid straight line speed, and especially here at Road Atlanta with such a long back straight. Uh, you have to be very, very wary of those Nissans, and this Mazda was pushing a little too hard. Ran a Tad Wide's got the uh, Nissan up on the outside. Another Mazda is joining in. Unfortunately, the uh, Nissan locks a brake and goes off into the sand. But it's still the RX-7 is having to defend with another car right behind. They both spin the wheels up, I think, as they come on to the straight. There was plenty of action going on mid-pack as well. The Audis had an issue. While their four-wheel drive traction is lovely, as you see here, this Audi gets caught out, has to <laughs> take to the grass to avoid the back of a 300. Their four-wheel drive traction is lovely getting out of the corners. They are a little bit understeery. Their bigger issue is they have no straight line speed in comparison to the cars they are racing against. RX-7 would pounce and get past that Nissan as well. Again, the Audi we're following here gets a fantastic run onto the straight. And then the Nissan is going to absolutely bugger off in front of it. Yeah, the Audis were, were struggling. The Mazda that was busy battling was well back on the Audis. They came onto the straight. He's right on his bumper as they come under braking. The Mazda's having a look, see if he can find a way past. The outside there is not a particular position you want to find your car. The RX-7 running a wheel across the, uh, across the grass. And, of course, the Audi can make the most of that uh, traction out of some of these corners. Yeah, it, what they were getting, the Audi 90s were getting absolutely mullered down the uh, the long main straight up towards the front and uh, the field did get spread out pretty quickly. There were often kind of pairs and trios of cars that were fighting for position but there were big groups in between these battles. Uh, well, you know, fastest laps were, there were some fairly consistent fastest laps. As soon as you got embroiled in battles you lost so much time because these cars were so fast uh, that, uh, yeah, there was uh, big old gaps throughout the field. This uh, RX-7 had a very, very very easy time getting up into second when you have that much straight line speed over the Audi and he was closing uh, as they sort of came onto the straight, got a good run onto the straight and so on, uh, the Audi just had absolutely no answer to the Mazda and the Audi had had no real answer to my Nissan that uh, was out in front either uh, when, it, when he'd been in second while they would close and the same could be said about the Mazda as well while the Mazda would close through the, uh, through the corners 
how can make up such an advantage down the uh, the main straight in the Nissan uh, that uh, they could never really get particularly close to uh, to challenge for the lead, which meant in this first race, my Nissan was to go on to take a victory. Certainly helped starting on pole to keep out of all of the chaos in this one, but uh, yeah, Nissan would win with a Mazda in second and an Audi coming home in third. Race number two to the Silverstone GP circuit and another Audi getting bogged down off the start line. He didn't get it going, but uh, would lose a huge number of positions. If you could get the Audis off the line, of course, being four-wheel drive, they would uh, get away. And you can see the two cars at the front, the two Audis there, were fighting. None of the Nissans is a random grid and none of the Nissans happened to be towards the front of it. this one. I was started last and stalled on the line. So, yeah, I was uh, well down the order through these first sections. Now all of the Mazdas are fighting amongst themselves. The Audis swap positions through these first corners again some shenanigans further back some rally crossing from the Audi I think they may have tried to go too wide or fitted cars in places where they probably shouldn't have been doing the RX-7 is closing rapidly down this back straight but can't quite get his car to the inside the Audi defends his position there is a whole line of Mazdas though now lining up ready to get a pass the two Audis continue to fight the green car runs wide on the exit that'll give the yellow Audi the opportunity to shove his car up the inside they both got the good traction off of the corner now the speed of the Mazdas as they start to reel them in the Audis are going to go side by side and they're going to screw each other over slightly as the car on the inside runs the other vehicle out a little bit too wide they're both slow off the corner and and all of the Mazdas come piling past. They lose two positions immediately to two of the RX-7s. Another RX-7 behind goes through the middle of them as they go through Maggots and Beckett's. And despite losing the lead, the Audis are still side by side. I, I love that shot. The, the Audis lost positions to all three of the Mazdas, but continued to be side by side through pretty much all of it. Uh, now, yeah, the RX-7s have got themselves to the lead as they buggered off down the straight. The highest place Nissans, they were fighting over I think about fifth place at uh, this moment in time the Audis were again dropping back through the uh, field here the the, uh, the black and yellow car got to the inside got a bit of oversteer and that was really very easy to do in these in these 300 so easy to put that power down a little too soon and get the wheel spin but to get his position back almost immediately as the blue car ran across the curb another thing you had to be really wary of in these cars he did an incredible job of keeping that car out of the wall there and not completely and utterly spin the car around these these nissans did not like bouncing across the curbs at all. i don't think any of the cars did particularly they're such sensitive race cars these ones that uh, yeah you could get yourself into quite a lot of trouble very very quickly with them and of course because they are such powerful such fast cars that when you didn't get, get into trouble you were going at such high speeds the accidents did tend to be on the uh, on the rather large side it, 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 as i said it has an incredible job of keeping that thing uh, out of a massive massive shunt and again though you can see not as long a straight here at silverstone as we had at road atlanta you can still see the amount of time these nissans could make up on on the likes of the audis if you could if you could get it cleanly onto the straights as i said i started at the back i had a poor start to this race so i had lots of work lots of overtaking to uh, to be doing trying to carve my way through the field there's two cars up ahead of me ran wide and you, a, you don't want to be you don't want to be out there we were going to brave it side by side into into maggots and beckers i think the mali one car uh, thought better of that one again not wanting to be forced across the curb you really didn't want to have to try and fight that or with uh, with any of these vehicles but yeah especially with the nissans you didn't want to end up there the rx7 was back there sniffing around having a look it was yeah not going to be able to do much coming on to this uh, straight but it'd be only a matter of time the rx7s were were really quite quick around this uh, track again much like we saw at uh, road atlanta the field did get spread out quite quite a lot there were still groups of vehicles you know there were still the odd pair the odd trio uh, it wasn't too many cars just circulating on their own completely but uh, yeah there were there were big big gaps in the in the field these two mazdas were i think we we're fighting over about 10th place at uh, this stage in the race as they run very very close to uh, one another the nissans were struggling more uh, around around here i was trying to kind of follow one of the rx7s here through the field it was proving to be quite difficult to uh, keep up. I was running a little bit wide over there. We come up towards this uh, next corner. They thought about having a dive up the inside. It's such a tough corner, though, to get overtakes done through there, and especially in these cars that are so quick. And you don't want to be running out wide on the exit. The kerb is, is a very, very vicious bugger as we come now 
through Maggie's and Beckett's again quick corners tough places to uh, to get past done there's very little in the way of braking it does help though when the car ahead of you runs that little bit too wide it was just pushing that bit too hard that's going to slow you down as you come on to this really long straight and you can see though even with these two running so close together the uh, uh, Nissan group behind was struggling to uh, to really keep up and still the Mazda is so close but just cannot quite find that way past but with a good run down towards these final corners he gets his car to the inside but that's going to put you on the outside for the last turn which is again you know you don't want to particularly be out here unless you really have to he's going to try and hold it around the outside and he makes it stick it's a great move to uh, to get that one as I'm across the curb and sliding I think the Mazda behind me was across the curb and sliding as well yeah it's a damn good overtake to get it around the outside of the final corner there in, in identical cars at the front, though, it was an RX-7 that was to take victory. RX-7s were to get 1, 2, 3, and 4 in this race. I believe a Nissan would get 5th with an Audi in 6th. The Mazdas were very much the car to have here at, uh, at Silverstone. The, the Nissans, yeah, weren't... The Nissans were struggling with the corners, and the Audis were struggling with the straights. The Mazda was definitely the vehicle to, uh, to have around around this track. I mean, the Nissans did, the Nissans and they did okay, but uh, yeah, certainly the vehicle to have was the RX-7. This was the, the fight for third as we came onto the uh, final. I mean, you can see second was well up the road ahead of these guys and, and fifth was, it was a fair way back. The uh, grey car trying to go around the outside, not quite managing to make that one stick. He's going to cut back to the inside on the exit, but again, he's not quite got enough speed and is going to be forced to go around the outside of this next corner corner the car on the inside runs deep they both outbreak themselves but still the white Mazda keeps his vehicle on the inside in the end the grey car getting forced out across the curbs can't do anything uh, about it even with a bit of a slide from the vehicle up ahead a good final few corners from uh, these guys yeah, again, another another relatively uh, spread out race. While there were some some good kind of pairings and trios going on, as yeah, the, the actual gaps between kind of first and let's say fifth or sixth, they were, they were quite sizable gaps in the uh, in the field. Our final race would go to the Catalunya full circuit. Turn one here is always an uh, an interesting. An interesting corner, quite a dangerous one. With uh, again, we've got vehicles that are so fast coming down here. You get such such huge speeds. While the front cars made it through okay, uh, well, most of them made it through okay. Uh, further back, there was again a few uh, a few shunts with uh, just so many vehicles trying to fit in to a very small space. Uh, yeah, the, the cars ended up on the on the grass, taking avoiding action and uh, so on. Around here, uh, an RX-7 had uh, started at the front and got to the lead. This Nissan was currently in third, coming under fire though from an Audi with the relatively twisty nature of this circuit the Audis were faring better at uh, this particular track immediately they were putting the Nissans under increasing pressure although one of them <laughs> put a wheel on the grass and that's going to send you uh, send you off one of the RX-7s in second ran ran a bit too wide he's going to lose two places in uh, that particular maneuver you can't afford to make mistakes in cars like these they are not forgiving at all you make a tiny mistake you're going to get in an awful lot of trouble the uh, Audi here uh, just ran a little bit too wide at the top of the hill that made him a bit slow down the straight and is going to get pounced on by everything he goes to cut back to the inside of the match doesn't realize that Nissan is coming through as well so uh, he ends up losing two places but with that phenomenal acceleration gets his car on the outside of the 300 uh, then gets a little knock for good measure and RX-7 gets up the inside of both of them and the Audi continues to lose places all stemming from running slightly too wide at the top of the hill and giving the RX-7 a chance to get past said RX-7 then promptly I think he probably had an argument with the curb and uh, lost quite spectacularly again there are very very vicious curves through that narrow chicane and if you kind of bounce the car across it you can uh, get it sliding and yeah not really stand much of a chance of uh, regaining control uh, again, we were seeing fields spreading out at a, uh, a relatively quick rate as, as groups started to form. The, as I said, the Audis were were more competitive, certainly. 
in, in this race. They're putting up a much better fight. They were making the most of being four-wheel drive around here. That traction out of these slower corners was coming in very, very handy. Though this Audi here running a little bit wide now. The 290s are going to be busy compromising themselves as they run up the top of the hill. One of them getting brave looking at going around the outside. Isn't quite getting in position to do that. We'll cut back to the inside as they run side by side down the back straight. But when you're fighting like this, you've got to be careful that you don't slow yourself down too much and allow the Mazda that's right behind you to uh, catch up and join in the fight. The RX-7 had enjoyed, at the front of this group, had enjoyed a brief moment of quiet, then ran wide, and now they're back to having all four of the cars fighting over this particular position. The lead Mazda again running a little bit wide. Audi's trying to get up the inside. He can't quite squeeze his car alongside. The Mazda at the back of the group has a big slide through shot. Still, the Audis are looking. The Mazda heads put a wheel on the curb. He's run a little bit too wide across the grass and loses all three places. As they're saying, you can't afford you can't afford to make little mistakes with these cars. They are not forgiving, and especially when you have so many quick cars around you. He loses. Uh, that mistake running wide lost him another place as well as a white and green car would get past because he had no momentum coming onto the uh, the straight. The RX-7 would then outdrag one of the Audis, almost outdrag the other one as well as they came down the start finish line. Towards the front, I had I'd been sat in fourth for a while. The RX-7 that uh, was in third tried to make a pass for second, made a small mistake and dropped back behind me while the Audi that was now sat in second drove off up the road, I was having to do my absolute best defending to try and hold this Mazda behind. I could just about fend him off if I made absolutely no mistakes. If I didn't, I got away with running wide at the top of the hill because the Mazda had been a little bit out of shape before. If, if I made no mistakes, I could defend from him because I could run away when we came to any acceleration zone, provided I didn't put the car sideways. I had the straight line speed in the Nissan to defend. The Mazda was absolutely all over the bumpers when we came through this section, those trying to get to the inside. But it's so tough to get passes done through these corners. It's, it's tough to do it with the kind of cars we've raced in versus the community, like the C-Class cars, the B-Class cars. When you've got vehicles with this much power, this much speed, it gets even tougher to get passes done. I mean, the brakes on these things are phenomenal. So yeah, trying to get overtakes done was really tough and we come to a straight and my Nissan buggers off down towards turn one. So yeah, I was I was gallantly trying to hold on to a third place for the Nissans. The RX-7s, uh, there were, uh, I think by the time we came to this final race, there were a fair few RX-7s uh, racing. These guys were all fighting amongst themselves as we come down the start to finish straight. The, the green and uh, white car getting himself to the inside. It's not quite going to be enough. They just tangle, puts the car on on the outside very very sideways and uh, we've got another Mazda is now joining in he's going to try to go around the outside of the next corner we get a lovely close-up of the two cars <laughs> fighting side by side sometimes the best place to be is the vehicle following the action because you're ready to pick out the pieces I mean if these two up ahead tangle all it takes is a little bit you've seen you've seen just how easy it is for a little mistake to cost you a couple of positions so yeah sometimes just just sitting back and being a little bit patient and waiting for an opportunity certainly with these cars being patient was very very important you couldn't really you couldn't really rush into anything as they're not easy to drive quickly these uh, these imsa cars they are not forgiving in uh, any way shape or form and sure enough we get the mistake that uh, they were looking for as the white mazda just carries that little bit too much speed into the corner may have run across the curve gets very very sideways and the other white and green car would find a way past and move up a position and in all of that the audi behind them was catching it was up until the last lap that uh, I managed to hold on to third place. It was kind of inevitable, the amount of pressure I was having to soak up. I just tried to carry too much speed, ran a little bit too wide for a corner, and the Mazda was in the absolutely right place to make the most of it. Dive his car up the inside, and he would get the position. And I kind of knew at this point, if I couldn't get a mega run out of here and get up the inside, I wasn't going to be able to get back past him for third. And despite a big slide from the RX-7, he covered the inside very well, and there was nothing I could do in the Nissan. I just didn't have the cornering grip of the Mazda through these next few corners. I was trying to hang as close as I could just in case he made a mistake, just in case I could pick up something, but uh, I didn't have the speed. I didn't have the grip through the corners to do anything about him. At the front, 
it was a, a relatively simple race for the RX-7 that uh, led, he, I think he started towards the front anyway, certainly got to the lead on lap one and vanished off up the road from the rest of it. You can just about see second coming around that final corner. Uh, it was an RX-7 that take victory with an Audi in second, with the RX-7 taking third, with me finishing fourth. Again, lap times weren't that massively different, between certainly between the top three anyway, but uh, yeah, just large gaps appeared as everybody was fighting. This was the final lap further back. These cars had been a little bit more spread out, everything kind of concertinaed up towards the end, with uh, one of the Audis trying to fend off some Mazdas, the RX-7 having the straight line speed down the back straight, but the Audi on the inside and having that four-wheel drive traction, that acceleration out of the turn. They managed to come together a little bit uh, through or whether behind the tyre bundle. The Audis forced to go around the outside. The white and green car is again <laughs> getting screwed over by other cars, kind of getting in the way. He's going to lose a position to an Audi as the yellow Audi is out very, very wide. He's on such a tight line coming into this final corner. The RX-7's up the inside. The Audi's trying to out accelerate via RX-7. He can't quite do it. There's an another RX-7 has joined in out of absolute nowhere and the poor turquoise car has fallen to the back of the group. Uh, the Audi would just about fend off the position there for the from the Mazda, sorry. It all got very, very chaotic at the end for, the for those guys. The IMSA cars were... They were tough. They were tough cars to drive. They were very, very quick cars to drive, and they were not forgiving at all. You made a slight mistake, and you were in an awful, awful lot of trouble with them. And yes, there were a few crashes, certainly on the openings or the opening lap, opening a couple of corners. We did see a few cars in trouble in most of the in most of the races. But once once everything could settle down, it actually proved to be quite good fun. And when I was you know, going through the replays and editing all of this together, it was it was pretty pretty good, pretty good racing for such crazy crazy cars. In general, the Nissans were very, very tough to drive. The Audis were very slow at a straight line. The Mazdas were probably the best overall car, although at a track with lots of long straights, that straight line speed of the Nissan was very, very handy. So it could hold its own at a road Atlanta, but the other circuits, it was just a little bit too hard to drive. At a very narrow, twisty circuit, you'd want the Audi with that traction out of the corners. It was holding its own come Catalonia, but uh, any circuit with any long straights, and the Audi was uh, in a little bit of trouble. It was kind of interesting to see how these these three cars fared. They certainly all had their own characteristics, their own strengths, their own weaknesses. They are seriously tough cars to uh, to go racing with, though. was was quite interesting to, uh, to race these kind of cars. It was, was pretty good fun. If you uh, didn't make too many mistakes with the cars, yeah, was uh, was pretty pretty interesting racing with these. Anyway, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.